There you go. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. Uh, please make note there is an amended agenda. Hopefully everyone has that amended agenda. And before we start each meeting, we ask our city clerk to read the quote for the week. Thank you. <clears throat> if you can see a way when everybody says there's no way, know that you have an extraordinary spirit to do the impossible. Thank you very much, Madam City Clerk. Call the fourth regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren. Here. Bauk. Here. Decker. Here. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Kittleson. Here. Kleunis. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Ryan. Here. Zurich. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Verhasselt. Here. And Wangerman. Here. 16 present. Quorum is present. At this time, I'd ask everyone to rise. We will pledge allegiance to the beautiful country we live in, and Alderman Bauk will lead us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Bauk. Approval of the minutes, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd move for the approval of the minutes. Second. Motion and second to approve minutes under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignations. Attorney McLean. Well, there's a letter dated April 16th. Excuse me, a letter dated April 16, 2008, to the mayor uh, from Dan Castro advising that effective that date he was resigning as a member of the Board of Review and he indicates that he appreciated the opportunity to serve the city of Sheboygan. Ask a motion to accept and file. Is it him? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I would make a motion to accept and file. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignation is accepted. Mayor's appointments. Stated May 19th. Honorable members of the council, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Terry Hansen to be appointed as finance director commencing June 9, 2008 and expiring June 8, uh, 2013. Signed by the mayor. And that will lie over. All Vice President Bourne. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Would it be possible to get a short bio on Mr. Hansen before the next meeting? Yes. Thank you. There will be a, a short bio uh, presented to all of you. Uh, the candidate was selected uh, through the screening process of the application. The interview team was Paulette Anders, Nancy Buss, myself, and HR Susan Hart. Anything else? No. Thank you, Target McLean. Next item on the agenda is a proclamation for National Public Works Week. And I would ask Mike Johnson, Jeff Sargent, Mike Bettina, and Clark Kleinhaus. Uh, Mike Johnson worked with the Solid Waste Division. Jeff Sargent was wastewater treatment plant. Mike Bettina with the cemetery uh, caretaker. And Clark Kleinhaus with street and sewer division. And these four gentlemen represent a good cross section of what public works is about. Thank you, Susan. And this, this uh, proclamation, of course, is a very, uh, a, a very important one because a lot of times public works uh, and the work that they do, the very important work that they do, uh, sometimes goes unnoticed because we take it for granted. It's like keeping household. People don't notice your house isn't clean until you don't do it. So you guys must do a real good job, and we really appreciate that. Proclamation, whereas public work services provided in our community are an integral part of our citizens' everyday lives, and whereas the support of an understanding and informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of public work systems and programs such as water, sewers, streets, and highways, public buildings, and solid waste collections, and whereas the health, safety, and comfort of this community greatly depends on these facilities and services, and whereas the quality and effectiveness of these facilities as well as, well as their planning, design, and construction 
is vitally dependent upon the efforts and skill of public works officials. And whereas the efficiency of the qualified and dedicated personnel who staff public works departments is materially influenced by the people's attitude and understanding of the importance of the work they perform, I, Juan Perez, as mayor, do proclaim the week of May 18th to 24th, National Public Works Week. This is important here in the city of Sheboygan, and I call upon all citizens and civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the issues involving in providing our public works and to recognize the contributions which public works officials make every day to our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. Gentlemen, thank you very much for the hard work. Here. And I had asked earlier if they would want to say a few words, and they chose not to. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is a public forum. Madam City Clerk. First on the list will be Delcy Johnson. Delcy, can I have your home address, please? 1306 North 3rd Street. And you <clears throat> will have five minutes. Thank you. Mayor Perez and members of the council, I learned last Monday that Mayor Perez had hired a new assistant. I was aware that the Finance Committee had authorized the hiring of a person to replace Susan Hart, who has been do doing yeoman's work for almost six months, jointly serving as the mayor's assistant and heading human resources with no extra compensation. So the issue is not whether the mayor's office needed to replace Susan temporarily, but the process and hiring decisions are problematical. The position of mayoral administrative officer was advertised in March as temporary full-time. The minimum qualifications call for a bachelor's degree from an accredited college or university with major coursework related to business or public administration plus four years of work in related, four years of experience in related work. The job description also calls for availability for substantial time outside regular hours, which means that this person could be working more than 40 hours a week. On May 6, the Salary and Grievances Committee voted to make the position a seasonal job under pay schedule X and essentially lowered the job qualifications. The basic requirements of such positions as I understand it is that the applicant has to be 18 years of age and a high school graduate. I do not know what other qualifications were expected of the applicants for the schedule X position of mayoral assistant. The Salaries and Grievances Committee also established an hourly rate for the position of between $27 and $30 an hour bringing overtime pay to potentially $45 an hour. Contrary to the, salary, the decision of the Salary and Grievances Committee, Mayor Perez decided to hire an interim employee, making it a salaried position and adding benefits, although the person he hired was already receiving 60% of his benefits as a non-union retiree. Several questions come to mind. Why did the Salary and Grievances Committee make the job a seasonal job? Why pay a seasonal temporary, per, temporary person with lesser qualifications the same pay as an experienced qual person who met the higher qualifications? Can the mayor ignore the decision of a committee and do whatever he chooses? If so, why do we have committees? On Thursday, I learned that Steve Sharp, the person who was hired by the mayor to be his, his assistant, had decided not to take the job which is good news because Mr. Sharp took an early retirement as deputy fire chief at the end of last year and received a buyout of $40,000. So in addition to a generous buyout package, the taxpayers who would have been paying Mr. Sharp a pension and $27 to $30 an hour, plus additional benefits in his new retirement position. I think that's known as double dipping. And I'm told that Mr. Sharp does not live in the city. Everyone who has discussed this with me has been outraged. The situation calls the mayor's judgment into question on a number of levels. The mayor should have considered the fact that Mr. Sharp had just received an early retirement package from the city. The mayor should also have remembered that he was elected by the citizens of Sheboygan. And although the city's hiring policy does not require it, I believe it is reasonable to expect that the mayor's assistant should live in the city. In this regard, one of the people who discussed this with me said, the mayor is sending the wrong message. 
A tangential issue that resurfaces is the hoopla last fall when the city announced that they would be saving the taxpayers one and a half million dollars with the early retirement buyouts. Five public works employees took early retirements. They are hiring four new people. Four police department personnel took early retirements. Since December, the department has hired six new people. Five fire department personnel took early retirements. They have hired eight new people. Four of those hires are for the ambulance service, and although Chief Lestowski agreed to a hiring freeze for the department when the ambulance deal was agreed to, he has hired another four new people for a total of eight. Which brings us to the budget. Like many other cities, Sheboygan is experiencing a budget crisis. It will soon be time to create a new budget. I urge you to be sensitive to what the taxpayers of this city expect and can afford and be diligent in finding ways to eliminate waste. City employees need to understand that much of the low-lying fruit has been picked. They have to make further concessions on health care benefits and layoffs may be necessary. I hope you will all be strong enough to make the tough decisions to again keep the budget at a 0% increase. But that becomes more difficult when you pay $30 and possibly $45 an hour for a seasonal temporary employee, $20 an hour plus benefits for part-time jobs, and give salary increases of 8.3%, 13.3%, and 19.2% to department heads, and pay the largest benefit packages of the county's public employers. Finally, there is another issue that I would like to mention briefly. The Public Protection and Safety Committee is discussing what oversight, if any, the city should impose on the Fire Department Ambulance Service. There was a Quality Assurance Committee, <clears throat> Quality Assurance Oversight Committee when Orange Cross provided me, ambulance Dulcie. service in the city. Would you like your extra minute? Please. Okay, go ahead. Which included an alderman, representatives of the fire and police departments, the human resources director, and two county representatives because Orange Cross provided service throughout the country. County. Orange Cross was not represented on the committee. The fire department is, of course, required to make various reports to the state. But I feel strongly that the city needs to establish a committee for the fire department ambulance service so that citizens will have a group to go to with complaints or concerns. This committee should include citizens and medical personnel. The medical director for Orange Cross is located at St. Hospital, at St. Nicholas Hospital. Interestingly, the medical director for the Sheboygan Fire Department is located in Manitowoc. Presently, the fire department is doing their own oversight and handling complaints. I think the citizens deserve more. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the list would be Steve Sharp. <coughs> Steve, can I get your home address, please? 818 Settler Circle, Sheboygan Falls. Say that name again. S Settlers Settler. Circle. Oh, Settlers. Okay. Thank you. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you, Sue. Uh, Mayor Perez, all the persons, citizens of Sheboygan. Five months ago, I stood at this podium and received a proclamation and a standing ovation for my 31 years of service in the Sheboygan Fire Department, especially for my 10 years of service as Deputy Chief, where I worked hard and diligently to save hundreds of thousands of dollars for the city of Sheboygan. I was deeply touched that night, and it was an honor and a pleasure to serve the citizens for as long as I did. That evening, I told several people if anybody ever needed some help, I would be willing to help them out. That is something that I think I also echoed at my retirement par party a month later. Approximately two months ago, I was contacted by Susan Hart, and she told me that there were many things that were falling behind at City Hall due to the fact that several key positions were unfilled. At that time, we talked about the purchasing agent job, but subsequent conversations began to focus on the mayoral administrative officer position. Several weeks ago, I had breakfast with Susan Hart and the mayor, and we talked in more detail about the position, what it consisted of, and what my qualifications might be to fill that position on an interim basis. I was given a copy of the job description, and one of the questions I asked was, this doesn't look like anything on a part-time basis. This looks to me to be a full-time position. I was told it was. I was told it would be on an interim basis, and that the <clears throat> city and county would be looking at shared services in the areas of human resources and that the term for this was undetermined at this time. I said that I would be interested in helping as I always have been 
and on that day we did not talk about any wages or benefits. Two subsequent meetings with Susan Hart produced conversations about the wages and benefits. The pay that was decided upon was put into an annual salary per the terms of the non-rep employee wage and benefit program. That uh, salary that was determined was within the guidelines that had been given to her and it also is in the lower one-third of the pay range for that position. The benefits that were talked about were reduced greatly and everything that could be conceded so that they wouldn't be redundant or repetitive on what I already receive um, was taken out and probably the most noteworthy of all was that the city would save 10.6 percent on pension because I would not need to have further pension benefits paid on my wages. Additionally it was noted that all these monies are in the current budget. I believe that for the past three years, Mayor Perez has worked hard to move this city forward. Many things have been accomplished. Uh, there's progress, there's building in residential and commercial areas, renewed enthusiasm for civic matters. Sheboygan is now being <clears throat> seriously considered the tourist destination that it really is. And uh, important key municipal services have been kept and or increased as they have in the area of the fire department ambulance service. Yes, there have been some bumps in the road, we all know that, but this has been done with little or no increase to the city tax rate. I believe that many of the problems that were caused were in, during the first two years when talk radio gone wild was allowed to let anybody who could dial 4582105 say anything they wanted about the mayor, the council, the department heads, the departments, or the city employees. The article that appeared in the Sheboygan Press on Saturday is another attempt to try to make something bad out of something that was potentially very good. When I read the word botched in the headlines, I know that there's a negative spin on things already. It's time for this community to recognize the good things that are here and that we all enjoy and stop the negativism. The position that is available now to, to be filled is an interim position. It's not a, a part-time job. It sh should not be considered as such. I never knew there was such a thing as Schedule X until about a week ago. It would be unfair to the dedicated employees that serve this city on a daily basis for me or anybody else to take on a full-time position and be paid like a part-time person and waive all the benefits when these people are working and to earn the wages and benefits that they do get. Excuse me, Steve, would you like your additional minute? Yes, I would. Go ahead. This position represents the city in all types of situations. It's another good idea by Mayor Perez to do something and think creatively. The private sector does it, Sheboygan County has done it, and the city of Sheboygan has done it, re turning retired employees to work and using their expertise. I trust that the press was correct when they quoted Alderman Surik saying that there was some miscommunication and that's why this thing has fallen apart to this point. I was sincere when I said that I would help the city if I could. The press was right when they quoted me saying that I would welcome the opportunity to help, but it has to be in a situation that all parties involved are <clears throat> uh, happy with. I look forward to the opportunity to speak about this again. I would hope that the respective council committees may review the situation. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> That's it. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. And thank you, uh, citizens, for addressing the council. Next item is, is the mayor's comments. But before I do that, I would just like to make some points of clarification on what has been said. Uh, the first thing I would like to do is uh, apologize to Steve Sharp uh, for uh, the unnecessary ba bashing and character assassin assassination towards you. Uh, I'm, an, I'm an elected official. I expect that. Quite frankly, I'm used to it. But there's no reason in the world why you should be treated that way by anyone. 
And sir, I've always appreciated the hard work and your commitment and loyalty to this city. I will continue to do so. And I apologize for anything bad that may have come out from good attempts. Second thing I want to point out is I will never, ever, ever forget who I work for. I work for the taxpayers. You will hear me often say, my office is not my office. I just get to use it for a little while. But I never, ever forget who I work for. All of you know that. My track record of public service is a testament to that. I represent the taxpayer. I represent the taxpayer. People have said I represent special interests. The only special interest in my mind that truly matters most is the taxpayers. And that's who I represent. And I don't forget that. The third thing is having a former employee who has retired or perhaps resigned come back and work for the city is nothing new. Being done now, it's been done before several times under different circumstances, under different scenarios. It's nothing new. It has happened before in the city of Sheboygan. The fourth thing, presidency, it applies to department heads. The mayor, mayoral assistant is not a department head. For us to try to go back and make that a residency requirement, it's just not fair. If we're going to do it, let's do it while there's nobody there and do it in a fair and equitable way. Let's not single out someone because they happen to be this person or they happen to have worked for this department. Residency, folks, applies to department heads. Doesn't apply to anyone else. Everyone else can live anywhere they want to. And those aren't my rules. Those are rules that have been established by prior councils years and years ago. The fifth thing, when we talk, when mention is made, uh, for example, Paulette Andrews, 19.3 uh, or whatever it was, an increase in salary. Again, we get half of the story from the only source we can depend on to give us a full story. We get half of the story. Paulette Andrews may have gotten an increase in her salary, but don't forget that she took over the entire city engineering <coughs> department and other duties. Paulette Andrews is responsible for the supervision of all city inspectors and the city engineer's office. It's a huge, huge uh, over undertaking, and she has done a remarkable job considering everything she, she, comes, she has to deal with. Uh, as far as the chiefs, I think uh, everyone knows that Ch Chief Lostowski came in as a new chief. There were increases in salary already set in place. Nothing came in either singly or in, in a biased way to single these, these three people out to give any more races. Whatever races they've got, it's because of the policies that you have in place now. And if someone doesn't like those policies, change them. But we will implement the policies that are in place. And the final thing, I don't go around looking for improper things to do. I don't go around looking for improper things to do. I, I do my best to abide by the rules and the policies the area of human resources in the city of Sheboygan is difficult because there's policies all over the place. One of the things that I had asked uh, Susan Hart as HR interim director is to bring, to bring some kind of standardization to everything. Through my three years of experience as mayor, I have never seen, and I've worked in public sector too, I've never seen where you can pull out any given time something that authorizes you to do something or something that doesn't authorize you to do something. And folks, that's one of the priorities that I will spend some time on with the HR director, even if it goes to the county. Our policies need to be improved. They need to be standardized. And we need to be able to have one set for all, not different sets at different times that we can dig up at any point in time. When I made the decision to hire Steve Sharp, or to offer him the position. I did so under utmost respect for the individual, for his commitment and work to the city, and because I trust him, and I believe he can do a good job. There were some questions there, as far as, quest as uh, uh, Schedule X, and as far as the internship is concerned. I spoke to Alma Surik and, and Attorney McLean 
for 10, 15 minutes in my office about it. Now, if there was some miscommunication, then there were some miscommunications. But when I left that meeting, when that meeting was over, I was comfortable and I was convinced that the mayor could appoint an intramural officer. I would not have spent that much time talking to two key people had I wanted to do anything improper. I don't go around looking to do things improper, and I quite frankly resent the implication that I do. We will move on. Thank you. Memorial Day Parade. As you know, Memorial Day Parade is back in, in place. Uh, Alderman Hanna, you wanted to say a few words before? Thank you, Mr. Um, again, it's a time of year and it doesn't happen often enough that we realize how expensive our freedoms are. Tonight, men and women are in harm's way protecting our freedoms. And I would encourage everyone here in Sheboygan to join us on Monday for all the Memorial Day activities. And I wanted to thank the mayor and and Vicki and Marilyn for all the efforts that you put forth. My understanding is we're going to have 64 uh, participants. different participants in the parade, which is just absolutely marvelous. Uh, so I think it's a, it's a great day for Sheboygan, uh, and it gives us pause to reflect uh, on the wonderful uh, sacrifices our men and women make. Thank you, President Hanna. We are well spoken. As you know, the Memorial Day Parade is on, as all of, uh, President Hanna has, has stated. It had been canceled. There are people who read that it had been canceled, but for some reason they haven't read that it's back on. So I want to make it clear tonight, folks, that the parade is on. It's Monday the 26th. As uh, President Hanna said, we went from 14 participants, parade participants, to 64. That's where we stand now. It's uh, quite an accomplishment. I believe the press call it, it will be a miracle if we can pull it through. Well, we pulled it through in two and a half weeks. Now we can sort of coast a little bit, but get some final things done on Thursday and Friday and wait. Uh, there are some very key, key people that were involved. Uh, Jerry Kantz and Jerry Winninger did an incredible amount of work. Uh, these two gentlemen have hearts of gold. They care. And I've seen a lot of that caring, giving, good-hearted people in Sheboygan, and these two people represent that. Alderman Montemayor and Alderman Meyer work extremely hard on weekends, on the evenings, to get this thing done, and without compensation, obviously, as I, and we got this thing done. We had a lot of people who cooperated. Some said we can't do it this year, but maybe next year. But it, overall, as you know, 64 participants for a Memorial Day parade is incredibly good. And again, we, we must not. It's, sometimes it's very easy for us to take for granted our freedoms and basic rights. And sometimes we forget that as we speak here tonight or go about our business tomorrow, there's people out there in Iraq somewhere getting shot at so that we can live the life we want to live. And we must never forget that and never forget the fallen soldiers too. So again, I invite everyone to participate in the parade. Join us at the Fountain Park program afterwards. It's, uh, it's all ready to go. Everything is in place and we expect some good participation. The next item I wanted to talk to you about real quickly is a Clean City Initiative. The, uh, we are proposing to uh, partner up with the Lakeshore uh, Apartments Association, uh, Mr. John Kittleson, former Deputy Chief of the Fire Department too, uh, husband of Alderman Kittleson, as, is a president of the Lakeshore Apartments Association and they've agreed to partner with us to put one good thrust of of a cleaning effort in the city. And tonight you will vote on item 352, which is the approval of the seasonal uh, code enforcer, uh, which will be responsible for going out into the community, looking at alleys, looking at roofs, looking at front yards, backyards, looking at streets, and enforcing the code as far, primarily as far as nuisances are concerned. Nuisances cover a lot of things, and primarily garbage. That code enforcer will be out there every single day doing just that. Our city inspectors are pretty busy doing other things and they're unable to, uh, to deal with those issues. We will put together a, a, a press announcement and we will let the people know that they have two weeks, if there's any garbage in their yard, they have two weeks in which to clean it or have it picked up. After two weeks, the code enforcer hopefully will go out and do his or her job. And folks, at some place, at some time, those who don't care for the yards are going to find out it costs more to keep garbage 
and to get rid of it. Okay, thank you very much. We will move on. We have two hearings tonight. Number one, to amend the zoning map to change the use district classification of property located at 1134 Ontario Avenue from class urban industrial to class urban commercial classification. The second hearing is for the adoption of initial resolution for industrial development project. Is there anyone that would like to address the council with respect to any of these two hearings? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Okay, please come up to the podium, sir. And can I get your name and address, please? My name is Francisco Halsey. I reside at 1014B North 9th Street. Um, we, my wife and I have submitted for um, rezoning to classification. Our intention is to open a neighborhood friendly retail operation that will be harmonious with the neighborhood. And um, we look forward to working with the city planning department and uh, making that property a viable property for the city of Sheboygan. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to address the council? Is there anyone else? There being no more, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd motion. I'd make a motion to close the hearings. Second. Motion and second to close hearings. Under discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Hearings are closed. Consent agenda 41 through 445. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion that all ROs be accepted and placed on file and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion? Alderman Bout. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd just like to be able to ask a question about item 438. 438. Okay. I'd okay. just like to ask the uh, Chairman of Law and Licensing. I wasn't able to attend, and I apologize. Just how did the process go for those applying for sidewalk cafe licenses? And we put a lot of effort into that last fall, and just want to understand how the process went and if we feel good about what we uh, have this spring. Thank, Thank you, Your Honor. Out. Vice President Hemp, uh, Lauren. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, thank you for the question, Alderman Balk. Uh, everything is going smoothly uh, with the, the applications for the sidewalk cafes. There were a couple loose ends a couple of the establishments had to uh, complete, but nothing, nothing major. Everything looks like it's a goal. Thank you, Vice President Warren. Alderman Rahassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I just have a question on items 4, 7, and 4, 10. Item 4, 7 is a communication from Wagner Excavating just asking the city, why are we spending a million dollars on snowplow equipment? Maybe we should look at local resources. I'm just curious if the, excuse me, the head of finance or a member of the finance committee could just explain a little bit of the discussion that took place with that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I, uh, Alderman Gisha? Thank you, uh, and thank you, uh, Alderperson Verhasselt. Yes, uh, uh, Mr. Wagner uh, spoke before the Finance Committee last week, um, and also Mr. Bittner was there to bring in his information. It was actually quite interesting. We used Wagner last year to remove certain parts of the tumultuous snowfall that we had that we just couldn't keep up with. And one of the problems they found was that there was actually no category, no line item in the budget to set up to utilize a, a private sector hauler like that. And they have the bigger trucks. We can't afford to keep, you know, fleets full of these big trucks. They get all four or five times what our dump trucks were. So kind of keeping under that $15,000 mark, we did uh, utilize several days of work by Wagner. It was quite effective. We also received a commitment from uh, Director Bittner that this will be a regular item in future budgets, and he's going to be looking to utilize that more and more because of their capacity and perhaps not just Wagner, but other persons' capacity. So the commitment was there for those two to um, 
to work together in the future, and it's going to be a at least a, the ability mechanically within the city to do that will be uh, available in future budgets. Okay. It was kind of a breakthrough. Thank you, Alman Gisha. And with respect to 410 by public protection and safety, President Henner. Thank you, Mayor. Item 410 was a, a communication from a citizen here asking, or I, I guess expressing very concerning comments against our police department. So I guess I'd ask again, <coughs> Chair of the Public Protection and Safety, or a member of the police department, to I guess respond. I'm curious to what due diligence we did to check into this to ascertain whether these were truthful comments or, okay. or not. President Hanna would do that. Thank you. Handle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we voted to, to file this document. Um, I think in, in general we felt that um, our staff was conducting a, a full investigation of alternatives. Uh, we are working in conjunction with the county and a task force to determine uh, the appropriate software moving forward. So um, I think we're covering all the bases. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much, President Hanna. Sorry. Sorry. I think maybe, maybe it's misunderstood, but item uh, 410, there's a number of documents in there, and I was referring specifically to item number two on document 410, and again, it's Citizen John Weber stating some concern he had about himself in the Sheboygan Police Department. Okay. President Hanna? John Weber had an opportunity to speak. Uh, we also referred uh, Mr. Weber to... Uh, to have a dialogue with the uh, chief of police. Chief of police had an opportunity to respond. I think the two of them will continue discussions. Thank you, President Hanna. Anything else? Otherwise, on 4-1 through 4-45, there is a motion to uh, approve. There is no more discussion. Please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Decker? Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heideman, Aye. Kittleson, Clyunis, Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Surik, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. and Wangaman. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 446 and 47 to be referred. Alderman Montemayor. Um, thank you, Your Honor. On agenda item number 447, I would make a motion to file. I think all of those things will be taken care of when we get to um, agenda item 454 that will be referred. Second. There's a second. 447, motion to file under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. One no. I'm sorry, who did the no? Thank you. Verhassel and... Two. Ryan, Ryan, oh, wait, wait, wait. There's a bunch. Please call the roll. <laughs> Hold on. Please call the roll. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Ryan, do you wish to say something? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I am opposed to uh, filing this. What we have here is a joint dog park uh, out in the town of Wilson has absolutely nothing to do with opening up uh, parts of Evergreen or Maywood. Therefore, I am going to uh, uh, vote against filing this. I think uh, this issue needs to be looked at again. Uh, we did review this a couple of years ago, and I, I think uh, it's uh, well worth looking into, and I think it would be a dis, uh, disservice to file this at this time. Anything else? Please call roll. And I vote would be to file, just so you understand. Right. Falk? No. Decker? No. Gisha? No. Hannah? No. Heideman? No. Kittleson? No. <laughs> and then Clayunas? No. <laughs> Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Ryan? No. Surik? No. Vanderweel? No. Verhasselt? No. Wangaman? No. And Boren? No. Two, uh, two eyes, 14 no's. Motion fails that will be referred. Report of officers 2, 448. We are holding, I will hold for 470. Make notation that that will be acted on when we act on 470. 449 lies over to June 2nd. 450 through 454 to be referred. Resolutions introduced 3. 455 through 457 lies over. 458 through 462 to be referred. Alderman Meyer. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would like to ask for suspension of the rules on document 460. Second. There's a, a motion to second. Is there any objection? Please explain when you do that, when you make your motion. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, this has already gone through public works. We addressed it at our last meeting last week, and there was some kind of a glitch with the document coming in, and it would be in the best interest of the city to get this moving, and it is putting some properties that the city owns on the market, and it would help with our budget. Okay. So then I would ask that the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second to put resolution upon uh, 460 upon its passage. We are the fifth month of, uh, of the year. Uh, as you re will recall, those two pieces of property and the potential revenue uh, was uh, calculated into our budget, and it's important that we act on that. Alderman Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I also think it's important to note that I believe Alderperson Meyer's committee has also gone through the complete normal scheduled uh, bidding process, and this was the low bidder through our normal bidding process as well, so that part has been vetted out too. Thank you. Good point, Alderman Gisha. Anything else? Please call roll. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wongaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Balk? Aye. 15 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. The rest will be referred. Reporter Committee 6, 463, by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license number 7841 based on the record of violations related to the license activity and failure to reveal all convictions. Vice President Bourne. <coughs> Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Motion and? Second. Second. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, is uh, Randall Smith here tonight. He's not here, Your Honor. Very well. Please proceed. Uh, Mr. Smith appeared before our committee last Tuesday night, and after uh, discussion and due diligence, uh, we decided to uh, deny the uh, beverage operator's license based on his uh, past violations uh, related to the uh, license activity and his failure to real, reveal all of his convictions on his application. Thank you very much, Vice President Bourne. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. And Decker? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Report of, off Report of Committee 7. 464 by law and licensing, recommending nine Class B intoxicating liquors license number 2554, the blue collar bar based on applicant's previous record of violations related to the license activities and on the committee's standards for, li issu for issuing licenses. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Motion in. Second. Second. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, is uh, Sherry. Servio here tonight. She's not here, Your Honor. Very well, please proceed. Uh, Ms. Servio appeared at our committee meeting last Tuesday night, and after discussion uh, and review, the committee decided to deny the uh, Class B intoxic intoxicating liquor license because of uh, violations related to the license activity and the committee standards for issuing the license. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. I'm sorry. Aye. Thank you. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 465 by the Committee of the Whole recommending granting the Class A intoxicating liquor license application number 2503 for Mad Max Convenience Store. Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Your Honor. I would uh, uh, ask that it be placed upon its... Accept and adopted. Accepted and adopted. There's a motion to accept and adopt 465, and there's a second under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. 
Heidemann? No. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 15 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 466 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 7861 based based on the applicant's conviction for conspiring to deliver con controlled substances which makes the applicant ineligible for a license as well as a failure to reveal all convictions. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Sure. Motion and second under discussion. Under discussion is Manuel Renteria here tonight. It's not here, Your Honor. Thank you. Please proceed. Uh, Mr. Renteria did appear before our committee last Tuesday night, and uh, his conviction for conspiring to sell or to deliver a controlled substance makes him ineligible for the license. Thank you very much. Any further discussion on 466? There being none, please call the roll. Kittleson. Aye. Kleunis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rindfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Surik. Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 467 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 7855 based on the applicant's violations related to the license activity which makes the applicant ineligible to hold a license and their record is a repeat law violator. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. We've been real busy at that committee. Uh, see that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Motion and? Second. Second, under discussion. Under discussion is Heather Horner here tonight. She's not here, Your Honor. Very, very well, please proceed. Uh, Ms. Horner appeared before our committee last Tuesday night and after discussing uh, her record, uh, her record of violations related to the activity, it, it, was, it made her ineligible to hold the license, so therefore we denied it. Very good. Thank you very much, Alderman, uh, Vice President Boren. Any further discussion on 467? There is none. Please call the roll. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Report of committee 7, I mean 8, 468 by Public Protection and Safety recommending repealing resolution number numbers 1118990 and 474-9293 relating to the City Ambulance Quality Assurance Committees. President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First, I'd uh, <clears throat> motion for the report of committees to be accepted and adopted, second. and then place the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. Alderman Clayness. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'm disappointed with the recommendation from the committee because I do think that it would be good if the committee, if the uh, Quality Assurance Committee had some other members on it besides just the fire department, um, so that it would be more open to the public comment and um, what just, I don't qualify, you know, conditions. Okay, thank you. Alderman Clayness, we okay. got uh, Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess uh, the rationale appears to be that because the city is now running it, we no longer need oversight. But I guess the way I look at it, it's the, still the same service, uh, just different people operating, same issues. We still have the need to meet obligations to our citizenry, whether Orange Cross is providing it or we ourselves as a city government are providing it. Furthermore, this more than any other city service that we offer involves life and death uh, and it has a direct and immediate impact on our citizenry. Uh, and also considering the strong feelings that still to this day exist about the Orange Cross going into, into the public entity, I think it would behoove both sides to maintain some level of oversight for the near term if it's only for the next year until this thing gets up running more smoothly and and everything is going spinning like a top, I think it would behoove both sides to have that sort of oversight and that public, that public, uh, I guess, openness. Okay, thank you very much, Holden Grassel. Next, we have President Hannah. Well, thank you. 
Um, and I agree with both the older people. And all this is doing is removing us from maintaining quality assurance over Orange Cross. And the fire department will be moving forward a document for us to review at public protection and safety. And then that document is going to be referred to the Committee of the Whole, so everybody's going to get an opportunity to work with it. Uh, this, all this did tonight was really put to bed a committee that is no longer applicable. And with, for which you have no jurisdiction yes. anymore. Exactly. Thank you, President Hanna. I'll, I'll take them in the order I get them. Uh, just for the clarification, um, as vice chair of that committee as well, uh, the, the Orange Cross Oversight Committee that, that uh, we're looking at voting on uh, today, uh, as explained already, is basically already null and void. Uh, we're not over doing any oversight over Orange Cross at this point in time. Second of all, that previous committee, uh, so I think we'll be happy once we, this comes through, once it goes to the Committee of the Whole, that people will see that, that we actually have a stronger oversight committee than we ever did have with, with Orange Cross going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, also being a, a member of the Public Protection and Safety Committee, um, I can assure the public that uh, the, the Oversight Committee of our City Ambulance will be more stringent than the former so-called Oversight Committee. The, the former Oversight Committee of Orange Cross was hardly an Oversight Committee and there was uh, um, uh, quality assurance was very rarely, if you read the minutes of it, very rarely ever, ever spoken about in the committee. Um, so I can uh, assure everybody that by the time this goes through the process, we will have what is known as a true quality assurance oversight committee. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Verhassel, second time. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I guess then my question back to the committee, is it their feeling foreseeing that they may have a committee that will be made up or comprised of citizens as well as public employees? We'll answer that question in a minute. In response, President Hanna? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think that's going to be vented out at the Committee of the Whole. I think that's the whole reason to bring it, so everybody's going to have a say in what should happen. Thank you. Next we have Alderman Klingness. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just, I read the minutes of that meeting and I just saw, it seemed as if it was being handled by the fire department solely. Are they making the recommendations only? That The minutes seem to say that they were going to consider this whole uh, oversight committee and they would come back with their recommendations for it. President Hanna, clarification? Yeah, they brought a document to us that we couldn't accept because it didn't come through the proper channels. Okay, thank you. Okay. Next we have Oman Ryan, second time. Uh, again, Mr. Mayor, this will be referred to the Committee of the Whole and, and that's where it can be discussed in depth that we can come up with a solution that everybody is comfortable with. Thank you. Any further discussion? There is none. We have 468, and the motion has been made to accept and adopt the reporter committee and put the resolution upon its passage. Please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? No. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson aye. and Clyunas. Aye. 15 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 469 by finance recommended authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget, establishing revenue and appropriations for 80% federal funding to purchase two ADA paratransit buses. Om Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the uh, report of committee be accepted and adopted. And the resolution. And the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Uh, Your Honor, this is a um, kind of an interesting purchase. These are two ADA paratransit buses to be used with the uh, um, the service that we we run in conjunction with the county. Uh, the county is actually appropriating two buses here in the future. These funds were actually appropriated through the normal channels of the uh, Capital Improvement Commission in 2006 that had been sitting in an account, didn't quite get to this purchase in 07. Uh, it can only be used for the purchase of paratransit buses uh, and not for anything else. So the funds are already um, in a line item account. Uh, it roughly, uh, and so citizens are aware, 20% is basically what the city has to pony up when we buy capital and items for the non-personnel items for the transit service. 
So this particular proposal is roughly uh, $120,000, I believe. It shows 90, pardon me, 96,000. And uh, our portion of that would just be 20% of that amount, and the money is already budgeted. Thank you. Okay. Okay, for more discussion, please call the roll. Montemayor? Aye. Rin Fleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the, the substitution resolution is just a change in it, and it is in the paragraph uh, where it's naming, now therefore be resolved, the members of the task force, we were suggesting that it be represented from the Sheboygan County government and not just Sheboygan County board. So that's the only change. Very good. Thank you, Alderman. Clean this. Alderman Gigitsha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, it's interesting. Sometimes we think these things are kind of symbolic, but I'll tell you, Alderperson Clyunas now in finance, it's been great. It's brought it to my attention as well. We were talking about these paratransit buses just a moment or two ago. I never thought about it, and I think this is what these things are good to bring it forward. She asked, can we do flex fuel? Can we do this? And looking at our other options having to do with sustainability and who thinks in finance that you can get involved with that kind of stuff. But it really was very enlightening to me and keeps it in the forefront uh, items such as this. So I thank her for bringing this forward. Thank you. Thank you. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I, uh, I called a, a meeting of the uh, Building Use Committee for June 3rd. I don't know if the, if the uh, agenda has been posted yet on the website, but as we go through the process of remodeling City Hall or possibly new construction, uh, item number E on Alderperson Clayunis' uh, resolution says, practicing and promoting sustainable building practices using the U.S. Green Building uh, Council's uh, LEED trademark program. So I hope as we proceed with uh, remodeling City Hall that we can use some of these uh, uh, U.S. Uh, green building initiatives as we go forward. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Okay, we will call the roll. Rin Fleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Aye. Meyer? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 471 by Public Works establishing a sustainable Sheboygan Task Force. Uh, Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask that the RC be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion to uh, declare we're going to file both. File, uh, file 471 mm -hmm. and 448, which is the one we held for now. And there was a second and the second under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Oh, hold on. All in I, was I apologize. I didn't see Following that. up on 448, make sure we're... RO number 130809 by mirror the provisions of state statute as it relates to switch... Longman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Mr.